Hello and welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to explain the key features of and how to use a simple benchtop DC power supply, as you can see on the screen. So it's the perfect tool for safely testing your own electrical circuits. There's lots of different varieties, but they all basically operate in the same way. So don't worry if you've got access to a DC power supply that doesn't look like the ones on this slide, they basically operate the same. So with that, let's get started. electrical circuits. So the first piece of equipment we're going to look at is a DC power supply. So you can imagine this is like a battery, it's a voltage source, but it's variable, we can set the voltage. This particular unit goes up to 60 volts and it can provide up to three and a half amps, I think. So if you look at it, they all look different, but they all basically do the same thing. Here it tells us what the output voltage is, what the output current is and how much power has been provided. So at the moment we're set at zero volts, so I can enable the output. I can increase the voltage, let's put it off 10 volts. And now if I took a multimeter and I looked between this terminal and this terminal, I'd measure 10 volts. It's worth noting that there's three terminals here. This one's the positive, this one's the negative, and this one is ground. So if there's no physical connection between these two terminals, then this output is not referenced to anything. All you know is that there's 10 volts between those two points. As soon as I connect a wire between these two, and I don't know if you can see, but there is actually a wire you know, between those two, it means that this negative terminal is tied to our zero volt line. So that's gonna be our reference. So if I have another piece of equipment somewhere else on my bench, and that's also tied to ground, I know they're at the same potential, the same reference point. So anyway, I've got 10 volts on these terminals now. If I connect a resistor between the two terminals, I'm going to take a resistor. And I'll plug it in. And you can imme immediately see now on the display that the current has gone up. So if we look, here's our 10 volts. We're now drawing, that's five milliamps and that's dissipating one watt. So basically all it's doing is timesing this number by that number and displaying it here. Obviously there's some errors because it's such a low value. So that in essence is how it works. And as we increase voltage, obviously current's gonna increase and that resistor's gonna get hotter. So it's already probably too hot to touch. So it's dissipating a lot of power. So there are some other things on this display that's worth you know thinking about how they work. So I'll remove my resistor. At the right hand side here, it's basically got our limits. So in this case, our limits, the maximum voltage we can achieve is 60 volts. If we look at the current, the maximum I've set the limit to at the moment is one amp. If we set our voltage to 60 volts, and then we got a 60 ohm resistor, and we connected it to the output here, we dissipate 60 watts. And that would be fine, that would be, be below our limit. However, if we replace that 60 ohm resistor for a 30 ohm resistor, so our voltage is 60 divided by 30 would mean our current's two amps. That's above our limit. And what this power supply will do, it will reduce the output voltage automatically between these two terminals down to 30 volts to match that current limit. So to give you an extreme example of that, if I just put on, let's say, five volts, enable that. Now I'm gonna take a switch. So a switch here. So it's just a push button switch. Basically, when I push the button in, I connect the two yellow wires together and when I release it, they're unreleased. So if I plug this into here, this is not really recommended to do because it's not so very good for the power supply. But now when the switch is open, obviously there's no current because there's no external circuit. The minute I press it, what's going to happen is the voltage is going to drop down and the current is going to increase. So this really should say zero and this should become one amp. I won't do it for very long because it's very bad for the power supply. So here you can see one amp, the voltage has dropped down to almost zero because it's a short circuit. And I can hear now the power supply fans have kicked on, it's dissipating a lot of power. And the moment I release it, 
everything goes back to normal. So that's an example of like a current limit on a DC power supply. So it's really important that if you were ever in the lab and you know you're powering your circuit and all seems to be going well and then all of a sudden your five volts disappears but you measure all this current chances are something's gone short circuit in your power supply and it's causing a big problem something's more than likely getting quite hot so in essence that's a dc power supply and this one's quite a fancy one as i said and i can change all these limits so i can deliver up to three and a half amps I can limit my voltage to much lower voltages, I can do pretty much whatever I like. And it's really a useful piece of equipment for testing electrical circuits. So just to summarise, we've learnt about the key features of a benchtop DC power supply, what it does, how it can be used and how we can use it to safely test electrical circuits. In the next video, we're going to look at a digital oscilloscope, which is an absolutely vital tool to be able to understand what's actually happening in terms of voltages in a circuit. So if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe.